So whenever you're ready, we'll get started. I'm ready. Let's rock and roll. All right. It's been long enough. You've been made you wait for all this time. <laughs> That's all <laughs> it right. Four, it only took 45 minutes and you're drunk. So, um, yeah. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say I'm drunk. <laughs> I'm in my happy place. I'm not quite that far gone. Bringing you law, gospel, and guns. This is Armed Lutheran Radio. Hi folks, welcome to Armed Lutheran Radio, a show about guns, hunting, competitive shooting, the natural right of self-defense, and what God's Word says about the issues surrounding gun rights and gun ownership. I'm your host, Lloyd Bailey, the Armed Lutheran, and this is episode number 233. Thank you so much for making Armed Lutheran Radio a part of your week. I apologize for ducking out on you last week. Had some family stuff come up at the last minute that I had to take care of. Thank you for your patience. I am so glad to be back, and I am so glad to be back with your friend and mine, the uh, pistol pack and pastor from St. John Lutheran Church in Willow Creek, Minnesota. Pastor John Bennett, welcome back. Thank you, Lloyd. Even though this is a week later than we had planned, I'm glad we're getting together right now. Absolutely. And today we're going to dig into the uh, a recent incident. It's not as recent as it would have been last week, but it's still relatively recent, and there's still lots of people talking about it. The, um, of course, the incident in Kenosha, Wisconsin, in the wake of the police shooting of Jacob Blake, um, where three mostly peaceful protesters were shot and, and two of them <laughs> killed by uh, 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse. Uh, but first, I want to thank the awesome men and women who support this show as members of the Reformation Gun Club. And today we want to specifically uh, name uh, Brian and Frank and Gavin and Scott and Tamara and Lee and Greg, Robert, Eric, Steve, and our newest member, John, from Spokane, Washington. Thank you all so much for your support, especially during these uh, these crazy economic times. Armed Lutheran Radio is listener funded, and that means we don't have any advertising. We don't have any sponsors. We rely on the generosity of people who want to see this show continue and uh, sign up and join the Reformation Gun Club and help us keep the lights on. Members get uh, early access to the show every week. They get some cool swag, hundreds of hours of exclusive content released just for members a new website with a new um, members-only forum, and uh, access to our monthly online hangouts, another one of which is coming up pretty soon. Uh, And if you'd like to help us keep going, if you like what we do, and you'd like to check out uh, uh, the Gun Club, visit armedlutheran.us slash gun club. Look for a link in the show notes. Uh, in this or any of our previous episodes and and see what you think and I hope you'll you'll join us. All right, we're talking about the adventures of young Kyle Rittenhouse, the 17-year-old uh, who shot three quote-unquote protesters during the um, looting and rioting in Kenosha, Wisconsin uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, before we we begin though, pastor, I I did want to to sort of clear up a couple of things. First, for those who who are not new and who listened to my commentary uh, in episode 232 a couple of weeks ago, I was very critical of um, uh, of Mr. Rittenhouse, of the young Mr. Rittenhouse, and as usual, as with all these incidents, we we knew very little about the incident. We knew very little about Mr. Rittenhouse, uh, and since then, my opinion of him has changed a bit. What was your initial reaction to this news story? My initial reaction is don't go to stupid places where <laughs> stupid people are doing stupid things. Yep. yep. Um, yeah, you know, it's since this has happened and we've learned a little bit more, uh, we, we learned that uh, this is a kid whose heart was in the right place Um, my opinion of him has been slightly elevated, but I still am of the opinion that even though his heart was in the right place, his head was not. Right. So yeah, my, my initial reaction was this kid's an idiot. 
he was breaking the law to come across a, the state line with from Illinois with a rifle to involve himself in this situation. And my biggest objection was that that people in the 2A community are hailing him as some kind of patriot hero uh, for killing two rioters and wounding another. Given what we knew then, and they were placing him on a pedestal. Today, it turns out he, and I didn't know this at the time, he lives, what, 15 miles from Kenosha. He works in Kenosha as a lifeguard. Like you said, his heart's in the right place. He didn't bring the rifle from, from Illinois. He was given a rifle by a Kenosha resident. Um, he was asked to help to defend a friend's property. So this wasn't just, I drove across the state line to get involved in this thing because nobody's helping out. And uh, for, apparently he was seen on camera giving medical aid to protesters. I think he is a trained EMT. Um, um, I can give a little bit of insight on that. Okay. Uh, and this this isn't universal, but... Uh, in the in a long time ago in a galaxy far away called Los Angeles, I was a Los Angeles uh, lifeguard and pool manager. And the the training that lifeguards received was equivalent to the entry level EMT course. Gotcha. Um, that you were they, in California, they referred to it as Title Twenty Two. I don't know if that was a California thing or if that is a universal nationwide uh, title, but. Uh, but lifeguards are considered first responders. They're they're trained for everything from uh, at least I was uh, everything <laughs> from compound fractures uh, to childbirth. So right, I so, got a funny story about that. So um, <laughs> lay it on. I us. know that I know <laughs> that sometimes uh, people come here for the humor. So uh, <laughs> every year we had to watch the same videos, and, and there was this video of a police officer assisting a a mother with an emergency childbirth in the back seat of like a 1970 something sedan. So that tells you how old the video was. <laughs> and uh, they, they show the childbirth. And then, um, you know, when the water breaks, they say, this is a normal amount of fluid. And at that moment, I remember there was a, a, another lifeguard had a water bottle and decided to squirt the guy next to him. So it was uh, rather a, <laughs> yes we we had a good sense of humor about that yeah so all right i well, got to see yeah so so yeah, you got so to he's... see uh private parts uh during lifeguard training so. oh okay awesome yeah interesting <laughs> not not in a well, glamorous so... way though i assure you no of course <laughs> so um Getting back to Kyle Rittenhouse and his lifeguard training, apparently, as you, as you noticed, we probably noticed in the in the video of him at this incident where he's carrying the rifle, he's wearing surgical gloves. He has a med kit, so he wasn't actually as has, he's been portrayed one of these guy these crazy people who picked up a gun and answered the call to go and you know protect property because the police weren't doing their jobs. He was. He worked in Kenosha. He was given a, a the rifle by a resident of Kenosha. He was asked by friends to help them protect uh, some private their private property, and it, so he was already there. And as you as a lifeguard, as someone who um, you know, and you can attest to this, having been a lifeguard yourself, he he clearly has a an. In, his heart's in the right place. He has a the, kind of the servant's heart thing where he wants to help people and friends ask him to come help. And so he does. So I'm openly admitting here that my initial reaction was wrong in many ways, but saying that I would agree with you. And I think there are lessons that we can learn here. We can draw from Kyle's adventures, um, both as gun owners, as and as citizens and as Christians, that we can we can kind of um, we can take from this and uh, learn a lesson, move forward. Uh, some will say, and some have said, "Look, the police aren't doing their jobs. We're sick and tired of seeing rioters doing whatever they want without any opposition." And good on Kyle and the others for stepping up. What as as 
both a from the perspective of of a citizen what's your and a gun owner what's your response to that we'll leave well, the christian res- we'll, we'll we'll leave the christian response we'll get to that in a minute but sure, as, sure. just as a citizen and as a gun owner what what's your your response to that kind of thinking i always fall down on the side of when it comes to the defense of property mhm the being prepared for the use of lethal force and defensive property isn't where you want to be. Uh, and the reason I come down on that is, is twofold. First, this kid is dang lucky he didn't lose his life. At one time, he was down on the ground having taken a skateboard to the head. The fact mm-hmm. that he was able to still get a, a clean shot off after taking a skateboard to the head, this is a tough kid. Uh, yeah. But... <laughs> But he he is very fortunate that he didn't lose his life because the possibility of his firearm being taken from him and being used on him was mm-hmm. a very real possibility in that situation. So, you know, I, I don't say don't attempt the use of lethal force in defense of property because, well, you know, you just don't want to get in trouble. I mean, that's part of it. But it, because... It's not worth putting yourself in a situation where you could lose your life right. because you want to protect stuff. Yes. And, and uh, I don't I hate that that argument that the rioters and the looters BLM are trying to make. Well, it's it's insured. It's just stuff. It's insured. It kind of sounds like that's where we're headed with that with that argument, but but really it comes down it ha, it's it's not the value of property that we're talking about. It's the value of life. Right. Because because right, not absolutely. only could Kyle Rittenhouse have died that day, but he. Now, what, what would have happened? Just to give you a scenario. What would have happened if, after he had stumbled and fallen down, his firearm had been taken away from him and not used just to kill him? But what if a rider had turned and used that on police officers or other first responders? Yes. And when you and when you bring a gun into a situation like this. And you say, yeah, we're here to defend property with lethal force if necessary. What happens? I mean, you, you better be willing to use it, right? We've talked about this before. If Whenever you introduce a gun into a situation that could potentially turn into self-defense, you better be willing to use it because if what if the crowd calls his bluff and says, no, we're going to go and knock these windows in? Is, yep. he then, is he then willing to use the gun to defend the windows or is he just bluffing and if he's just bluffing then he should never have been there in the first place that was this that's that makes his decision entirely stupid right well and and, and this is the other side of this you know to to protect property mm-hmm. um if you look at and i know we've had uh, or, or you have had uh uh uh, episodes on this before with people who have had their lives turned upside down because they used a firearm in self-defense mm-hmm. and uh, the the amount of money that was spent on defending themselves so that they can preserve their liberty was astronomical yep. is it worth having your life turned upside down in order to have protected property especially in in this case especially when that property is not your own now i could understand it you know the uh, the roof koreans during the the los angeles riots mm-hmm. you know and and here we had a case if i remember correctly and i, I don't know why the term roof koreans comes to my mind but that's the term that's been used yep. is that uh, these were uh, these were gentlemen that owned a firearm dealership or a firearm store if i remember correctly and, and there's a case where, yeah, that's something that they, they definitely had a right to protect. Uh, if you want to take upon yourself all the ramifications that come with protecting your own property, mm-hmm. I still don't think it's the best idea in the world if, if there is no life at risk at that point, but have at it. It's a little but easier if, to, to understand and to justify if you're right, if you're talking about your own property and where I think right. Kyle... so. And we'll get to this in a minute. I think there's there's a little bit maybe of some peer pressure thing in here where where you're put on the spot and a friend says, "Hey, will you come help defend my my business?" You know, seventeen. Do you have the 
fort you know are you do, you do you have the intestinal fortitude to say to your friend you know i don't think that's a good idea right or and do I, you say sure i'll come help because you're not thinking about what could go wrong i think the latter is is really where it comes down to is that uh you know i could see as as a 14 year old that you know, you can get really excited about doing this. Hey, I'm going to help with the effort to do something good and right and so forth. And I, I highly doubt that he had taken the time to mentally process the other side of this. If he had, uh, I he probably would have declined the offer. Right. If he had known where this would have gone, mm-hmm. and of course, hindsight's twenty twenty. Hindsight's always twenty twenty. If he had known where this was going to go, I I I would have lost a tremendous amount of respect for him if he hadn't made a different decision. All right, so let's let's focus on the police part of that sentiment that I mentioned about how you know people get upset that or, or see this these riots going on, police aren't doing anything to stop it, and they feel like they've got to go and and get involved. Um, we talk a lot on the show about Romans 13, the idea that the government wields the sword for the punishment of the wicked and the protection of the good. But when the government refuses or is prevented by politicians from wielding that sword, are we, in our vocations as citizens, permitted to step in in that case? You know, that's a very interesting point. And, you know, uh, yes, we've talked about uh, the the stupidity of protecting property with deadly force, even when that property isn't yours, and so forth. What comes to mind at the moment is Luther's explanation to the seventh commandment that uh, to uh, you know you shall not steal. What does this mean? We should fear and love God, so that we do not scheme to take our neighbor's money or goods or get them in any dishonest way, but help him. Oh shoot, my memories failed me. Nope, you were right on. You were spot on, and that is exactly where I. That's where I was going next, actually. All right, now now that I just created more editing work for you. um, (laughs) In Luther's explanation to the seventh commandment, he instructs us to protect our neighbor's property for him. Uh, So, in a roundabout way, you could say that that Kyle was. being obedient to the seventh commandment in that regard. But on the flip side of that, it's when you place your life at risk for the protection of property, uh, what are the the detrimental effects of your death to your loved ones for the sake of maybe keeping, and in this case, it was a car dealership, another case, you know, I think it was a car dealership and then a repair garage or something. Mm-hmm. Um I am sure that if a few cars got burned, that would really suck for the owners. Yeah. But it wouldn't suck nearly as bad as your parents having to bury you. Yes. Uh, and, so, and as and as slimy as the as the three quote unquote victims were, um, their lives are still more valuable than the cars. You know. Yes, and that's. Uh, here is one of the, and I, I have uh, unfollowed a few people on Facebook in the past few weeks ever since uh, this shooting because what I find deeply disturbing is how uh, you have people and and even Christians glorifying the fact that Kyle Rittenhouse shot scumbags. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and and. I, and, and- and last week or last episode, I even kind of offhandedly joked that it wasn't a great loss because two of them were, you know, one of them's a wife beater and the other one is a child molester. Right. Yes. And, and as karma would have it, the, the uh, child molester was shot in the groin. So, um, <laughs> but, and we can, we can poke fun of that at the same time. Wouldn't it have been better if if Kyle had decided not, I mean, of course, we can't go back and change what's happened, but if he had not decided to use lethal force and those two criminals had been arrested mm-hmm. and 
through the course of incarceration had come to repentance and faith. Right. Uh, you know, and it's, I don't want to sound like John Piper because I think the guy is just a turd. Uh, <laughs> But well, and I but, was about uh, to say we're not we're not going down <laughs> that John Piper path, right? The, uh, it's and here's the thing: if and and yes, I can applaud him for his desire to come to the aid of those in need. You know, earlier in the day, he was helping to clean up graffiti and so forth. Mm-hmm. That's that's laudable, uh, but when he made at least in my estimation, the poor decision to be prepared to use lethal force in defense of property, that completely changed. Um, he would not have been at risk from being assaulted by these criminals had he not made those, in my estimation, bad decisions. Um, so, right, and and let's let's also let's just to make clear, we're we're not. Like we said, we're not going down the the John Piper path and saying, "Well, he shouldn't have he shouldn't have shot them because they would they could be saved later." We're right. not condemning his actions once he was attacked. Once they attacked him, that's a whole different ball game. Right, showed, all bets it, are off, especially when I believe it was no, it wasn't the the child molester. It was the guy who had a record for for uh, breaking and entering or something that he had attempted to shoot Kyle. Um, right, he had a gun, yeah. Yes. So, uh, and, and by the way, what gun laws should have <laughs> prevented that? Uh, right, <laughs> but right, exactly. Aside from that, um, once once he was attacked and his life was under threat, at that point, all bets were off. Yes, and he showed, I, I have to, to say, remarkable restraint for a 17-year-old being attacked by a mob. Right. The fact that that only three lowlifes were the ones only the ones who attacked him were actually shot is really kind of impressive. Because you've got a crowd who's chasing after this kid. He gets kicked, knocked to the ground, he gets hit with a um he gets hit with a a skateboard and somehow he only manages to shoot the people attacking him, right. not any of the people, the bystanders who are standing around. Right, and that's, you know, the pictures that we saw of him, he showed excellent trigger discipline, mm-hmm. obviously had excellent marksmanship, and in this case, he had a justifiable reason for the use of lethal forts in defense of his own life. Yep. Um, I still have a difficult time with the fact that the only reason he found himself in need of using lethal force to defend his life was because of the poor decisions that he took that put him in that situation. Right, and 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 I think the the problem that most of the people who are um, on either side of this issue, whether they they are lionizing him or whether they hate him and think he is despicable, there's I think there is an inability to understand that multiple things can be true at the same time. Yes, it was bad for him to be there. Yes, it was a bad idea to have a gun there unless you're, I mean, to go and go armed to protect property. On the other hand, it's a good thing that he had the gun because if he had not, he would have been killed. Right. Right. And at the same time, nobody would have been shot and he wouldn't be facing murder charges if he hadn't had a gun and if he hadn't been in that situation. All those things can be true at the same time. Right. And here's – this was my overall summation of this, especially after we learned uh, what his activities were comprised of for that day, that he could have taken care of the, the graffiti without being armed. And, and, and from the pictures, it would appear that he was not armed at that moment. Uh, he could have walked through Kenosha. You know, he, he could have taken duct tape and put on his shirt, you know, taped the word medic on his shirt mm-hmm. and just walked around and rendered aid to those who were injured. Yep. He could have done all of these good things without making the bad decision of being armed. And by the way, I, I think you'd be hard pressed 
to prove that he would have been targeted with the violence that he was targeted with had he not been armed. If, if he had been just walking around with his med pack and made it clear that he was just there to render physical aid to anyone in need of it, I doubt he would have been attacked. Right. Right. And we, but, and I can hear the, the argument against this, which is the whole rights argument, but he had the right to be there. We have a right to be armed. And, and we're not suggesting that you don't. What we're suggesting is that, that we as gun owners need to be a little more discerning and a little more cautious when it comes to inserting ourselves in situations where that gun may have to be used. Because as, as gun owners always say, and as we have said on the show, the use of the gun should be the last resort. But when right. you put yourself in that situation where it's more likely that you may have to use the gun, now that last resort looks a lot more likely. And, and you're putting yourself in a situation where, one, you don't have any authority to, to use that firearm. You're not a, a hired security guard. You're not a police officer. You're not a member of the National Guard. You're there on, you're, as a private citizen. And so your gun may actually incite the reaction um, that he got, like you were saying. And I think... And it, that kind of gets to the whole, you know, open carry thing that we neither of us are fans of. That the 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 better way to go, to go armed, if you're going to go and help out, and you want to have a firearm to protect yourself, the better way to do it is concealed. Which, right. of course, at 17, he can't do. Right. But yeah, there's there's a little saying that, and I don't know where I heard it. Uh, so I can't give credit to the whoever is the originator of this phrase, but you win 100% of the gunfights you avoid. Mm-hmm. And and this is a gunfight he could have easily lost. So, uh, and of course, the flip side of this too is that we don't know how his legal battle is going to turn out. He may not have a sympathetic jury. He may end up doing time behind bars. And in the end, if that's what happens, he will have learned the hard way that none of this was worth it. Yep. Yep. Exactly. And even if, which is what I think will happen, is he's been overcharged. This is clearly not absolutely mur- clearly not murder. Um, what's going to happen? when he actually beats this charge and he doesn't get and and a a jury doesn't find him guilty or they don't or they end up lowering the charge or dismissing some of those charges the the murder charges and he ends up pleading to a gun charge which he did which he actually did violate um what's going to happen in that town or across the country next uh, because they're already trying to paint him as a white supremacist, and this this will obviously be um, a sign of of um, uh, white privilege that he's not the he got away with killing two people and shooting another, and he's not going to jail for it. Yeah, one of the well, I guess there's there's two points on this. First, that if he does get off. Uh, if uh, rioters and pedophiles are going to, or not rioters, if pedophiles and wife beaters are going to riot, um, gosh, that, that's a fight almost welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I say that tongue in cheek. I am not serious. <laughs> but uh, but on the other side of this, uh, hit the decisions that he made that day did no favors for advocacy for Second Amendment rights, because yeah. this will be used as uh, leverage against our liberties. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it, will, it, it, it will potentially be used in that way because he used what what liberals like to refer to as an assault rifle. Mm-hmm. Uh, he used uh, he used lethal force. He had a thirty round magazine. All the things that liberals hate. And by the way, he was underage. And so uh, this is one of the uh, uh, the intended outcomes of these quote unquote universal background check laws that just by simply allowing someone to use your firearm 
it then becomes a felony, both for you and the person that you loan it to. Uh, so yep. I, I can easily see how this incident will be used to try and undermine our Second Amendment rights. No, absolutely. Which, again, to anyone who, who wants to hold this kid up as some sort of hero, please take a minute to think about the damage that he has done to our fight to protect this liberty. Yep. Yep. Absolutely right. Now, um, I found a couple of uh, posts at our favorite source for heresy and uh, and uh, anti-Christian hatred, patheos.com. Oh, uh, the cesspool. Oh, yes. Um, but uh, we're a little short on time, so I'm going to save that for the Reformation Gun Club. And if you would like to hear the rest of this discussion and get access to hundreds of hours of, of exclusive content, be sure to check out gunclub.armedlutheran.us. Look for a link in the show notes. All right, Pastor, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I appreciate you. It was worth the wait to, to be able to, to discuss this with you. Yes, it was. And in all honesty, I think having an extra week of, of time to reflect on this probably made this discussion more worthwhile. Yep. Yep. All right, folks, uh, if you have any questions or any comments, any complaints, I'm sure there will be uh, interesting debate on this, uh, further debate on this. If you've got something you'd like to share with us, a question or a comment you'd like to uh, hear us respond to on the air, uh, visit our feedback page at armedlutheran.us slash feedback and uh, send us a voicemail or a voice message or an email. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, Until next week, when we'll have uh, another of our variety shows with uh, members, with all the members of the cast again, keep shooting, keep praying. We'll talk to you next time. John Bennett is the pastor at St. John's Lutheran Church in Willow Creek, Minnesota. For more information, visit stjohnswillowcreek.org. For show notes, be sure to visit our website at www.armedlutheran.us. Check out the Facebook page, The Armed Lutheran, or join our Facebook group, Fans of Armed Lutheran Radio. If you like what you hear, please leave us a comment on our feedback page at armedlutheran.us slash feedback, or a review on iTunes, and let us know what you think. Thank you for listening to Armed Lutheran Radio, a member of the Self-Defense Radio Network.